Okay, so in this segment, we're talking about uh, di uh, tools for digital curation, mainly categories of tools, not specific ones, and, uh, and some of the tools that maybe we think need to be developed uh, that haven't yet been developed. Um, I, I will start with one that, that uh, hasn't been developed that I, that I think is, is really desperately needed, and that is uh, some um, tools to help do assessment, appraisal, evaluation of potential collections of digital materials. Uh, a computer bot that could go across a collection of documents and give you a profile of it. Uh, saying, you know, the, the format, the size, the, the number of duplicates, uh, what, uh, what they're about, um, and what kinds of documents they are. All of these are technically possible uh, with existing uh, technology because, uh, but it's, it's very difficult to do this as uh, if you get thousands of, collection of thousands of documents, where do you start, you know? You do, you, one of the things we want to avoid in digital curation at all costs, I would argue, is item level processing as much as possible. Uh, we want to do uh, batch processing where, wherever we can. Um, you know, in the ingest process, there are tools now that will uh, allow for, for batch uh, processing uh, uh, that will allow for doing file normalization, as it's called, and uh, uh, do checksums uh, automatically on all of the uh, all of the documents in a set, um, all with the press of a button. Um, if you don't know what, the, what I'm talking about, you will before the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I imagine, you know, the, an analogy here, Richard, um, you correct me if I'm wrong, is that I would imagine that a lot of that uh, uh, software is available in the, in the science disciplines, um, the hard sciences, uh, but maybe hasn't been as refined for uh, the world that you're in, sort of special collections and, and the ingest of, of um, you know, maybe more textual-based kinds of, rather than data-based materials. I mean, we were talking earlier um, about um, how, how the, uh, the digital curation in the sciences is a bit different than it is perhaps in, uh, when we're talking about historical societies and, um, you know, cultural uh, objects, is that... Well, I think it's a case of uh, actually putting the um, technology into usable ap applications for a specific setting. The 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 uh, you know there have been programs in records management that would do automated indexing mm -hmm. of of uh, documents using uh, latent semantic indexing or other other forms of in indexing uh, uh, and assign a subject index. It, it's it's quite possible to to uh, classify documents by format by the way they're configured. Okay. Um, all all of this technology exists, whether it's used in well science. You usually talk about scientific databases right. rather than text, than you know uh, documents as we we normally think of them, um, but the technology exists, the tools don't yet yeah. exist, right. but they, they could. Yeah. I think that, you know, in the case of science, it starts quantitative in so many cases, right. that aggregation and, and visualization are, are, mm -hmm. are skip a whole step. As, as Richard said, you know, you have to like look through and see what the frequency of words are, for example, and figure out what the subject is based mm -hmm. on that. And um, so the frequencies are already given right. when you're it's detecting. It's almost curatorial phenomena. from the beginning, right? I mean, or it, curated in some way. From in the a beginning. sense, it's it's more Organic. manageable, yeah. uh, massageable as data. Yeah. But you know, if you look at, at, at even just outside of um, in in the world at large, a uh, hundred million tweets a day. You know, it's just a, a phenomenal amount of, of, of textual data. Mm -hmm. 70 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute. Mm -hmm. You know, how mm -hmm. do you scan through formats that are that complex? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's not to say that scientific data isn't huge. It's real often referred to as big data, mm -hmm. but it's not video tapes of people <laughs> playing music. Right. right, but this is also, the, you know, the sort of gets to my point that we're going to need uh, different kinds of, tools for searching, for aggregation, for uh, locating um, digital materials. Uh, there, are, I mean, there are a number of websites out there that, in fact, curate tweets mm -hmm. that, according to different criteria. Uh, <laughs> right. Where they come from, uh, physically where they come from, or geographically where they come from, from whom, what they're about, you know, uh, 
uh, and I'm sure that will be possible retrospectively with the tweet archives. Um, but uh, you know, the tools will have to be built, and uh, you know, so. Uh, well, this I mean, this really highlights then the uh, the necessity for. Uh, curriculum development and for education in the field of digital curation. I mean, it, it really brings out um, and emphasizes the importance uh, that a, a new generation who is increasingly digital savvy is um, understands the importance of, of developing these tools that, that you're saying we need, Richard. Right? I mean, and, and so education seems to me to be where that would begin. Um, you know, certification and technical training and vocational training in digital curation. I think that you'll see people in different disciplines increasingly um, studying digital curation in addition to whatever else they're they're doing. That's that's how I see it evolving and necessary. bringing that expertise to their discipline. It's right. true. It, it does seem to be not about a separate discipline so much as a tool that, a toolkit that everybody needs. Yeah. I'm thinking about literary studies and Emory University um, acquiring the papers of Salman Rushdie, the author. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, you have all the papers to go through, but you also have four computers with separate hard drives with 40,000 digital artifacts on them. Mm -hmm. You really desperately need what Richard is saying, which is you know not something they can just go through and say, okay, I've got all these, you know, uh, electromagnetic frequencies, or even I've got all these tweets, but I've got completely different kinds of files that just happen to be on a com standard right, computer hard drive, right, from right. clip art to emails sure. to, and and how do you kind of uh, digest those into something meaningful? Yeah. And and so increasingly we'll have to be, um, no matter our disciplines, uh, whether we're working in a historical society, whether we're a scientist, uh, uh, a, a museum curator, or whatever, much like we uh, most of us have to learn how to file papers. At one point, we had to learn how to write on a manila envelope, you know, the title, and then we'd put the right papers in there and put it in a filing cabinet. Um, that was a skill that one was expected to have to work in an office, right? And and so digital curation is going to be much like that. And it's just a skill we'll all be expected to have to. Unless develop. unless we all have digital secretaries, which is unlikely. <laughs> well, yeah, and and uh, but again, it, it raises the problem of standardization. If this is something that we all need to learn. Doesn't it increase the problem if we're all learning it in different ways, right? I mean, if we have different habits of digital curation, has it really solved the problem? You know, the trick is to find the standards that uh, tolerate difference. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so it's a question to think about. Can, uh, can you think of an instance where you tried to find something on Google, the most uh, popular search engine, and you were not able to locate it 